Welcome to Inside the Huddle. I'm Jeff Skaversky, joined by former 10-year NBA veteran Maurice Spates. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. You haven't uh, been in the NBA. It's been a few years. How much do you miss the game? You were a part of so many different teams. You won a championship. How much do you miss the action? The only part I really miss is just being around the teammates like that. I'm not, I'm not going to say I really miss, you know what I mean, going up and down like that too much. Right. Kind of just miss being around teammates and grinding out there. But it's always good to see the guys you play with still playing and playing at a high level. So it's, it's, it's good to watch. You, uh, so you miss some of the practices or, or more, <laughs> more of some of the games? Uh, just probably that feeling of putting that uniform on and go out there about to play. Yeah. More than you, you know what I mean? Especially on the road and at home, playing in front of your home crowd. Home crowd. It's always a good feeling. Obviously, I'm sure you missed those paychecks too, right? Oh, yeah, it was good. It was <laughs> good. Yeah. You had an unbelievable career. You won a championship in college at Florida. You won a championship with the Golden State Warriors in 2015. Was there one that was more satisfying to you? Well, the college ones, like, man, damn, I'm at, I'm at a military school watching the guys playing the championship the year before. So I'm like, damn, they really won a championship. In college, and that was an amazing feeling as a freshman. But I think the NBA one is all is global. I think everybody, every country, every little small country in, in Asia and, and, and France and Africa, all that they know about the NBA finals. So right, right. The, the playing that one and be a part of that everywhere I go around the world is. I mean, know me as a champion, so it, it feels good to uh, be a part of um, a special select of guys. So. I'll say the NBA one. And you talk about some of those guys from that 2015 team, Steph Curry, obviously Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. You were a part of that dynasty from the beginning with a rookie head coach at the time and Steve Kerr to see how much they have grown. How amazed are you at this entire run they have had? Man, that, 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 that franchise over there is just all about the players uh, from, from the owners um, to the gym, to the head coach. And, and those guys are a special group because they're so smart. None of them got egos. All of them is about the system. It's about winning. All of them making all this money. But at the end of the day, you be around them. All of them is about one goal, and that's winning. From Iggy Dollar. Iggy Dollar is probably one of the smartest people I've ever been around. And then Draymond is, is a whiz on the court. And then, of course, Steph and Clay is guys that's next level. So, it's good that they got some of the guys from, from championships to team still around, Sean Livingston, um, Barbosa, those guys around, being around the organization, it, it looks good. Did you know in 2015 you win that first title with them, your only NBA title, and you're seeing that group, that core group at a young age. Did you know at that point that this could be something special long term? Yeah, for sure. Uh, because, like I said, those guys are special. Those guys is different over there, man. The, the work ethic on off days, when Coach said get out of the gym and everybody's still in the gym, just stuff like that, a, a team bonding outside of basketball, going to people's house, having barbecues and playing cars with each other. It's like, there's nothing else like it. It's kind of like a college atmosphere out there and everybody just want to win. Everybody's working. So those guys are special. Like I keep saying, those guys are special. And everybody goes to that organization, always have a great time. You talk about a work ethic. Take me inside that. What does that mean when someone has a strong work ethic? What What does that mean to an NBA player when you go, oh, wow, this guy is doing A, B, and C? What do you mean by that? Probably, all right, just say you practice for an hour and a half during the year. Like After practice over, everybody is still getting shots up. Steph's still working hard, probably harder than he did in, uh, in workouts than he did in practice for 45 minutes when somebody's guarding him full speed. Clay Thompson down there shooting probably 500 shots in less than an hour. And Draymond over there getting his shots up. Like, these guys is always shooting. And when I say uh, work on, like, off days, is go, we come back from a back-to-back -back games, you still go to the gym the next day when everybody's supposed to be home. You'll see eight or nine guys in there. If it's with the trainer, if it's with the uh, conditioning, if it's shooting. Guys just love being around the gym because the franchise did a great job bringing the family or uh, like a family vibe to the organization. And that's why they're elite. 
And how much do you feed off that as a player, when you're around that and you see great players growing and grinding every single day, not resting on what they've done in the past, things like that. What does that mean to you? How much does that inspire you? Oh, it's a sponge, man. You know, uh, me being a role player my whole career is basically me watching. You know what I mean? I, I was a sponge my whole career in the league and just going over there and watch these young guys putting in the work every day, every day, every day. It's a sponge to it. Even though how, no matter how old you are or how, what you did in the league, you go to you go to the go to state organization, you got to be a sponge because everybody's doing something. Everybody's a part of the movement, what's going on. If it's the trainers, if it's the equipment guys, if it's the front office, everybody's a part of it. And you, and, you, and you got no other way but to buy into it or you're going to stick out. <laughs> How much did you learn from Andre Iguodala? You play with him in Philadelphia. You play with him again at Golden State. I mean, the guy is an NBA Finals MVP back in 2015. He's such an underrated player. And I know he did a lot for the Philadelphia organization. Didn't get a lot of credit for that in Philly. But he goes out to Golden State and really shows his worth in the league. It just shows you like with Iggy, man, he's no ego guy. Like you think about it, he's been a, he was an all star. He was the main guy for Philly. Then he goes to go main guy in Denver. Then he comes to the Warriors, and they told him basically take a back seat, like come to the bench. He probably wasn't okay with that beginning, but honestly, that's what still got him in the league since today. Because he knows he's a locker room guy. He's a smart guy. He's gonna be a GM or a coach or owner of a team soon. So it's like you gotta have a guy like that who going to teach you. He's going to get on you, but he's going to teach you the right things. And I learned so much about him just being around him, just seeing how he moves, seeing how he works. And he always keeping his body right. And he loves his family. So I learned a lot from him. Like I say, the first thing, I've been mean, so me and Steph is kind of a year apart, but we was playing AAU together, 15, um, 17 U AAU. So when we were traveling, I always see him in the airport. If we're going through Charlotte or whatever, he had his local team. In high school? Yeah, in high school, in high school. So... He's just a just a person, like a, a perfect kind of guy, man. He's he's not gonna BS nobody. He's just gonna work hard. He, he's not gonna really talk that much. He's just a born leader. Like his energy, you know, he's a leader. He's gonna come in every day and work hard. So you see the best player on the team, one of the best players ever, working hard every day. You gotta work hard. You can't be like, no, nah, I'm tired. No, nah, this guy play every game forty minutes. So if he could do it, he ain't no other excuses. But he's just a great guy, man. Really respect him. Yeah, you talk about the NBA Finals. You talked about missing some of the action. When you're in the finals, what is that moment like? You talk about it's on a stage in front of the entire world. What is that like, that adrenaline you get, whether it's putting on the uniform, running out of the locker room during pregame introductions, whether it's on the road, getting booed, in your case, in Cleveland in 2015 against the Cavs and back home in Golden State. What is that like as a professional athlete for the rest of us that have no idea what that feels like? What is that like for an athlete? You got to have, like, playing, playing the NBA and just playing in those stages in general, you got to have a different kind of mindset. You mean what I mean? So a lot of y'all guys who write and all that kind of stuff, it's easier to say this, it's easy to say that. But at the end of the day, you got to be different to play on that kind of stage because you're fighting against everything. On the road, You go, everybody going against you. You see what I'm saying? It's up to that those 10 to 17 guys to come together and, and be one as a unit going on the road and win. But it's definitely, at the end of the day, it's basketball. It's definitely hostile. Your, your blood always flowing, blood always flowing. But... It's a feeling you never could really dream about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I imagine growing up, you wanted to be an NBA player. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so what's that moment? You get drafted by the Sixers in the first round, 2008. What, what, what is that like going back to draft day? So my situation, like me, I played varsity my junior year. I played JV my sophomore year. My first time ever playing basketball. I was a football and baseball player. I'm from Florida, so... You know, football and baseball is the main sports down here. But I got taller, and, and Coach Larry Murphy from Gibbs High School just kept asking me, man, you going to play basketball? You going to play basketball? So I started playing basketball, and I started getting better so quick that a lot of everything started coming at me fast, fast, fast. And then by the time I feel like by the time I got to Hargrave prep school to Florida, I was like, oh, I might have a chance to go to the NBA. Right. And then once my name got called, man, all that hard work, <laughs> I, I put in in a short amount of time. It was just a blessing to be real. It, it was really a blessing. Life changes for my family because I grew up in the in the in the hood. So it's like 
the first person to ever go to the NBA out of St. Petersburg. It was a lot of pressure on me, but it was amazing at the end of the day. Yeah, that has to be an incredible feeling to be able to help out your family. How did you help them out? What, what are some things that you did, you know, during that 10-year run that you had in the league? No, I did a lot of – that's one thing about me. I'm always about my um, family and my, and, my, and my people who's close to me. So, did a lot of things, bought my mom a house, bought a couple, three cars or two cars and bought my sister, brother, all them cars and – Invested a lot of money and just did the right things. Like, like I said, I come from, I, I kind of come from, I come from the hood. So I knew I never want to go back there. So I was never about all the luxury stuff. I right. Was about standing my means and just being me. You know what I mean? I never changed. I probably got a different car, probably got some different shoes before. But at the end of the day, I'm not scared to go to Walmart. I'm not scared to go to, you know what I mean? Family dollar. I'm not scared to do none of that. Right. Well, that, that's hard to do because, you know, you're in a league and I talk to so many different athletes, Eagles and Phillies and Flyers and Sixers and athletes throughout the country and all the sports. And, you know, you look at the guys in a sense, his paycheck next to you and you're competitive. You're the ultimate competitors in what you do. And this guy has this and this and this. And I think it's hard to be humble. I remember covering David Eckstein in St. Louis, World Series MVP back in 2006, and his teammates would joke he was driving around a used Toyota Camry that his sister gave him. And guys yeah. would give him a hard time and joke with him. But he was very, very frugal, would live within his means, per se, to go, yeah, I'm making really good money, but this needs to last me forever, as well as, you know, helping out his family. And that's the thing right there, what you're saying, like, a lot of guys respect you to be a certain kind of way when you get to the league. Like, I'm never going to look at another person's pocket. I'm never going to look at what he got, what he got. And try to do that. No, nah, I'm my own self. I gotta live my own self. They're not living for me. So right. at the end of the day, I'm not, I don't really care what they say. Because at the end of the day, like you saying, I gotta be, I gotta make sure that this blessing God bless me with lasts for a long time. You talk about getting a late start with basketball, getting a really late start. Joel Embiid has a very similar kind of trajectory there. You're a big man. I'm sure you appreciate his game. You surprised that he hasn't won MVP yet? Loses it back to back years to uh, Jokic. Yeah, for sure. Great kid. Uh, he kind of grew up down here in my area. Played for AU team, Florida Rams. That my guy was running. So I kind of seen him when he was younger. But that guy had been dominating in the league. I think this year he got hosed a little bit. But it is what it is. That's what happens sometimes. So the guy could play big, strong, athletic maybe injuries or something, but at the end of the day, he'll get one though. It get feel, one. Yeah. It feels like he's going to get one, one of these days. Yeah. And speaking of playing incredible, what a turnaround for Al Horford. He comes to Philadelphia. Obviously it did not go well. He's admitted it wasn't a good fit. Sixers, Celtics, everyone has admitted it hasn't been a great fit for Al when he was here, but he goes back to Boston two years later. He's in the finals for the first time. It took him forever to get there, but what a run. He's playing great. You know him from college. You won a championship with him at Florida. How appreciative are you of what Al Horford is still doing to this day and the level he's playing at? Man, Al kind of always been like a just a perfect player. Like no tattoos, a fresh cut. Always yes sir, no sir to the coaches. Always first in everything and just a leader, man. So I'm I'm happy for him, and that's the and that's one of the reasons that I'm kind of looking at the finals a little bit more and lately because I'm like. That was my teammate, man. We sweat together. We grind together. And now he's playing in the finals against the guys I want to get. So it's kind of like bittersweet for me. But at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. Relationships can last forever. And me, him, being him, being one of like close friends, I, I respect him. I'm happy for him. And I'm glad what he's doing. Did you understand, you know, you played in Philadelphia, a very difficult city to play in when your team is not – winning i mean it's a passion it's great it's amazing when the teams are winning when they're not it's a tough place to play did you feel for al when he was in the situation in philadelphia going he just needs to get to a better situation yeah that's what happens sometimes man just the, the situation not always good for you so for him being in philly for a couple of years i love that place and certain guys just not cut for it and, and certain guys just don't fit it so he was able to get out and go back to boston where he, he looked like he's probably going to end. You see what I'm saying? So I'm having for him. And, and, and like, like I said, sometimes just 
need different scenery. Look at Iguodala. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect example. Right. So you have Horford, you have Iguodala, Steph Curry, LeBron James you've played against. The best guy you have ever seen on the court, the best basketball player you have ever either played with or against. <laughs> No, I, I'll say the best guy I ever played against was, I feel like it's Kobe. Kobe was just different. The energy was just different. Like, his work ethic, the way he his demeanor was, or he don't care what you say about him. He's not going to entertain people doing the game. He's just going to work and do his job. RIP to, go to him. And what about playing with? Uh, Steph. <laughs> yeah. So No question? It was Steph and closer AI. I played with AI when he came back. Yeah. But, but the, 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 the guys who I've seen do some amazing stuff, my top two, I'd say my top three is Steph, um, Kyrie, AI. That's a Mount Rushmore. That is an incredible Mount Rushmore of NBA stars. Last thing for you, you played for Steve Kerr in the very beginning. I mean, some eyes kind of turned in a sense – he becomes a head coach with no coaching experience in 2015. Phil Jackson wanted him with the Knicks at the time. He turns them down. He turns his old boss, his old coach down with the Knicks. He goes to Golden State. What makes Steve Kerr and what made him at the time such a great coach with no experience? Obviously, we know what he did as a player, winning all those rings with the Spurs and the Bulls. But what has made Steve Kerr such a great coach with no experience? Like, if you think about you think about guys who played Steve Kerr, played GM, did TV. Steve Kerr is a smart guy. Mark Jackson, great guy. Shout out to Mark. He should have been got a job. I'm not sure why he haven't. But he got it. He had the team at a perfect place. Mark, Jack, Mark Jackson had a team at the perfect place. Those same guys, us, we ready to go the next year. Steve Kerr knows that. He's smart. So I'm going to take a team that – Took the Clippers to a game seven that's coming back a year older, a year mature, and on jail more. First, that was the first year with Iggy Dollar with Mark Jackson. Me, you see what I'm saying? Then Steve Kerr coming next year. It's our second year there. He takes on a team that's already good. Only thing he had to do is to, uh, change a little bit of the screws was already in there. And that's what he did. Coach is a great guy, smart guy. You know what I mean? He got a really good team. Then he had got a really good team to inherit. So his job was really it was it was hard, but it wasn't really that hard. <laughs> He's running out of fingers with all those rings he has from his playing days and of course his coaching days. That's crazy. Maurice Spates, thanks for joining me inside the huddle. I'm Jeff Skaversky. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you, man.